have understood what is stomata and what are the raw materials occurring in the photosynthesis and what is plant nutrition and all these things, we will be looking at a simple experiments to understand why these raw materials are important. Okay, so what is the first thing we are understanding that chlorophyll is important for photosynthesis. So chlorophyll is a pigment, a green pigment without which nothing can be done with the photosynthetic part. Now I'm just looking at to understand that this particular uh, process is to understand only that chlorophyll is necessary. Now what I'm taking, I am taking a green colored leaf. I can always take a colored, different colored leaf that is a variegated leaf. I necessarily not only the green leaf, okay? Now what I do, I take a colored leaf or a green leaf, I will put it in boiling water. Now why do I put this into boiling water? So the boiling water will make the leaf softer. So it will make the leaf softer. Now then I dip and then I clean whatever dust, everything is present, I will clean them. Now I will take the leaf and then put it under ethanol or alcohol. And uh, why do I use alcohol? Because if I'm using alcohol, the chlorophyll pigment will break down will break down that is the plastids and the chlorophyll whatever is present will break down releasing the pigment into the water now what we can understand now the leaf looks white in color the leaf looks white in color so after you put it in alcohol you remove it again you put it in water so that you wash off whatever is present now the leaf is white in color now we use a certain kind of test for understanding that starch is prepared during uh, stored in the photosynthesis. So what we do, we take that leaf, we test it with an iodine solution. So iodine solution will turn blue black in color if there is a starch prepared in that particular area. So iodine test is to understand that starch is a stored product in photosynthesis. And when does it prepare food? Only when the chlorophyll is present. So if I am taking a variegated leaf, the other parts of the leaf, that is if I am taking other parts of the leaf, only the green part. So if I say this is the green part, this is the red part or this is an yellow part, you will find the starch test only in the green portion understanding that chlorophyll is the only pigment which can make photosynthesis. So simple experiment to understand that starch is prepared in the form of food. Okay. Coming to the next one, another simple experiment to understand that carbon dioxide is important for photosynthesis. Okay. Now what we have done, we have taken a setup here. Now what is the setup? It is a bell jar experiment, what we call it as. So in if you observe the two plants, let us take it as A and B. We will understand there is a small watch glass inside. Now, what does this watch glass contain? Potassium hydroxide. Now, why did we have potassium hydroxide here and why we didn't have it on the other uh, uh, bell jar? That is because in the first experiment, we should understand since we are trying to understand that carbon dioxide is important, we are removing the entire carbon dioxide from the first jar that is A. So if I'm using KOH here, whatever carbon dioxide is present inside the bell jar is all absorbed. So when it is absorbed, we understand that this particular one does not have any carbon dioxide. Now we will be going to the B. Since it does not have KOH here, that is potassium hydroxide, we understand the carbon dioxide is still present in the second bar. Now what we do? We will allow the plants to make photosynthesis and then when we take a leaf and test it for starch, we will find that there is that starch test, there is no blue-black color. The iodine which is violet doesn't turn blue-black, but whereas in the second bell jar, if you pluck a leaf and then test it for starch, you will find the leaf turns blue-black. Simple experiment to understand that carbon dioxide is one of the important substances required for photosynthesis. Now, in schools, you must have been uh, understood, uh, you will be understanding by looking at a leaf peel so that you can observe whatever we studied, you can observe under a microscope. For that leaf peel, so what you do, you take a leaf peel, a thinnest one from the leaf. Now, 
taking that leaf peel under a microscope before you put it as a slide what you do you wash it so washing is very important to remove whatever dust is present so that it can be clearly observed in the microscope under a microscope then we add a drop of saffron in so the dyes differ depending on what parts you want to see saffron in will give a pink color it will stain the leaf peel now when you stain it you can observe the parts more clearly that's why we generally use a stain technique method now once you have taken now you you have taken the uh, leaf on a slide then you added saffron in and then you need to take one more slide to close it so that the leaf peel doesn't move across so before doing that you add a drop of glycerin now why is glycerin added in the process of getting a peel and observing in a microscope the peel should not get dried up so when you add glycerin the leaf peel will stay particularly in that moist condition now place a slide on it after you put a drop of glycerin then you put it under a microscope first to see in a low resolving power then you increase the resolution and then see it under a high power so when you do so you can observe all the parts of the leaf just whatever we studied under a microscope this is a simple simple techniques to understand what are the parts of a leaf peel so since we have understood all the raw materials there is something else we will be taking care of that is the nutrients which are required other than what we have seen other than this water carbon dioxide and chlorophyll now what are the other raw materials we'll be taking care of plants apart from this they also need nitrogen they also need certain kinds of inorganic salts and remember any biological process to occur we always need enzymes we always need enzymes so enzymes are nothing but the bio catalysts which help in uh, to make a reaction go faster so what are enzymes something which makes a reaction go faster you use certain type of enzyme there are so many enzymes required in the process of photosynthesis now how are these nitrogen inorganic salts and other kinds of nutrients obtained you all know most of the nutrients that is nitrogen can be fixed by using certain kind of bacteria that is rhizobium bacteria so nitrogen can be fixed directly from the atmosphere or through this rhizobium bacteria and the requirements will be done for it now apart from this other in our inorganic salts will all come from the soil and directly through the roots directly through the roots now we have to look at a question have we understood like what is the difference between the energy requirements of a unicellular and a multicellular organism since we have looked at a multicellular organism now with the plants have you ever thought why a unicellular organism is different from a multicellular organism to understand this let's understand just take up in a small example of amoeba you know amoeba is a single celled organism and bacteria is also of a similar kind when i say a single celled organisms the energy requirements may not be the same for these kind of organisms because amoeba is a single cell and it has a direct contact with the environment so simple diffusion will be enough for it to have its requirements but not with the multicellular organisms so this multicellular organisms require more energy so we have understood that these are the processes which are required for multicellular organisms whatever we did in the beginning so all those processes are necessary for a multicellular organism to survive now what are the processes we are we have just finished talking about 
So the entire physiological processes are simply called as life processes. So the entire session, we were only looking at these kind of processes. The total sum of processes which are required for maintaining the metabolism of a living organism, it is life process. Now, life process occur in two ways, a catabolic way and an anabolic way. So this is breaking down of products. You can take uh, respiration as an example. An anabolic pathway where you can take the example of photosynthesis. So combinedly we give the term metabolism. And remember most of the reactions we talked about till now are all oxidation reduction reactions. They are all oxidation reduction reactions. So the entire life process is based on enzymes, based on these kind of oxidation reduction reactions, catabolism, anabolism. So this is the understanding of all the process which and the plant nutrition, the enzyme part of it, all that is based on all these things. So let's take a few questions uh, which can be asked during exams. So some questions which are generally asked in the exams. So how do parasitic organisms derive their food? So how do they derive? They derive because from the host. We already discussed about it. They all deserve, uh, derive the uh, food from the host. Now I gave you example, Kaskata, and I have given you example, ticks, mites, and all those things. Now these parasitic ones, they have special uh, roots or root-like structures, which are called as hostoria. Now these hostorial roots directly take nutrition from the host and then they help them to survive. Sometimes in this process, the hosts have the chances of even causing death. So the host will die in this particular process. Now the second question, what are the organelles in plants which help in photosynthesis? So that also we covered. The organelles will be plastids. Please don't write chloroplasts. And chloroplasts, you write what is called as the green uh, colored pigment, that is chloroplasts. So plastids are the organelles and green plastids are called chloroplasts. Just under, uh, split the term when you write the answer. So this is the place where the chlorophyll is present and this helps in making photosynthesis. Now why is glycerin added? This also we understood. So glycerin is added to keep the slide or the specimen in a moist condition. That is, it should not dry. So that's why we add the little bit of glycerin whenever you mount it on a microscope. Now the fourth one, KOH. Potassium hydroxide, why is it used in the bell jar experiment? Because this potassium hydroxide has the ability to absorb carbon dioxide. So unless you absorb between two different uh, experimental structures, so only then you will understand which part is making photosynthesis and which is not making. So removal of carbon dioxide is done by introducing potassium hydroxide in that particular experiment. Okay, now the previous year questions which were generally asked in Explain the significance of photosynthesis and write the balanced chemical equation involved in this process. So you will write what is the significance of photosynthesis? What is the significance? Significance is to prepare food, to give out the oxygen which is necessary for the heterotrophic organisms to live. And you write a balanced equation, what we have already written, that uh, the, the raw materials and the equation what we have done, that is the carbon dioxide plus water, in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, it makes a molecule of glucose plus oxygen and water. So since I'm taking water on both sides, I would like to balance this equation. It will be 6CO2, 12H2O, then C6H12O6, 6O2 and 6H2O. And please name this as glucose when you write it. And this part is also very important. Without the raw materials, you will not be able to fill the equation. Now, this is the 
answer for this. Now, the second one, in an experiment to prepare tem temporary stain mount. So, we saw all the staining techniques one by one. So, this question was asked in 2014. So, you can write all the steps what we uh, understood. That is taking a peel, putting a saffron, washing it, then uh, putting stain that is saffron in, then again putting a drop of glycerin and then putting another slide on it to visualize under microscope. Please go through those steps and uh, give all the steps. And then after that, there is one more question. Why this cotton wool is used, is not used during the removal of excess stain? So you are preparing the experiment and then you are telling that cotton cannot be used uh, for removing the excess stain that is the saffronin. Why so? Because cotton has the ability to smudge. That means whenever you put cotton on any kind of colored substance, it will cause smudging. That is the color will spread unevenly across the surface. So instead of cotton wool, we will be looking at a blotting paper. So blotting paper will absorb whatever excess stain is present in that particular position. So what we do, we can use a blotting paper instead of a cotton wool. So that is why we should not use cotton wool. Now next question, explain an activity with diagram to show that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis. You can take that variegated leaf experiment and you can write the steps, how you boil it in water, then alcohol and then look at the chlorophyll part of it. So using the staining techniques that is iodine, we will understand how the iodine color changes to blue black and what are the parts which changes to that particular one. Okay, so that's all for this particular session and we will try to move across. We will be doing the other sessions later on. For now, we have understood what is photosynthesis. What is plant nutrition? What are the raw materials? What are the different types of nutrition? One, what exactly difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms? And what is it differentiates a living and a non-living organism? So that's all for today. And with this part, we will continue doing so in the other sessions which continue. Thank you so much. Yeah.